Mirte here and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make this winter themed art journal page. For the background I'm using my distress oxides in the colors weathered wood, speckled egg, faded jeans and tumbled glass. I'm working with the craft mat that comes with the glass media mat from Tim Holtz. I just press down some colors on the mat and then I spray it with a little bit of water. Then I press my art journal right into it. I did this a couple of times with the colors I showed you at the beginning and dried the layers in between. After repeating this process a couple of times, I figured that it was quite difficult to fill in the whole page this way. So I used my blending tool to fill in the gaps with the color tumbled glass. When the whole page was covered, I went back to the technique that I used in the beginning. I did this a couple of times until I was happy with my background. Now the background is ready, it's time to stamp my image. I used this little guy from the Katzelkraft stamp set Le Babo Sherlock Holmes, if I pronounced it right. I stamped him down on a page I teared out of another art journal. This art journal is the same brand as the art journal I use today. So the paper is the same as the paper I used in the background. I colored the images in with my Ecolam brush markers. These markers have very vibrant colors that react with water. I colored the shadows and now I use a water brush to push some color to the middle to create some sort of a gradient and some depth. For this technique it's important that you use a waterproof ink for stamping the image. Otherwise the lines will react with the water too and then they bleed out into the image. I don't know which brand I use for stamping the image because I have this ink pad since I was 8 years old. But you can use archival ink for example or another waterproof ink. When I'm done coloring, I cut out the image, but I skipped the little details such as the little hands because they are too difficult to cut out. But that ain't a problem since I'm going to stamp the image on the background as well. To 
make it look as if it's cut out perfectly, you color the edges with black. This way you won't see any white border around it. When I laid down the image on the page, I decided I wanted to stand out a little more. Now his blue jacket disappears too much in the background, I think. That's why I wanted to make it a bit darker by giving it another layer of the same color. This looks better, I think. Now I want to create a snowy border around the page. I do that by pressing down some Versamark ink around the edges. And then I'll throw some white embossing powder over it. I believe this embossing powder is from Ranger, but you can use any white embossing powder that you have. Because it's snow, I don't want it to be a perfectly straight edge, so I'm brushing off some of the power with a dry brush to make it even more imperfect. Then I heat set the powder with my heat gun until it's completely melted. And then I repeat the same process for every edge of the page. When the border is ready, I take a look of where I want my image to be. Then I can stamp the image on the page. This way it brings back the little details such as his little hands. I also want to add a sound effect as if he is shivering. And by stamping down the image I can also see where the letter should be. I'm sorry my head gets in the way sometimes. Because the letters are so small it's pretty difficult to see otherwise. It doesn't really matter if the letters overlap the image sometimes, because I'm going to glue the colored image right over it. And I actually like it that the letters are also going behind him. I think it makes it even look more as if the sound effects are coming from this image. Now it's time to stamp the sentiment. I use some washi tape to make sure I stamp the letters in a straight line. I start stamping the letters from the middle of the words. That's because this way I make sure that the words are nicely centered at the page. As you might have noticed already, I made a little mistake above the W. But I was able to cover it up with my Distress Oxides. You can still see it a little, but in the end when the page is all finished, you won't notice anymore. To finish off the background, I used the snowflake stamps from Tim Holtz and I stamped them with Versamark on the page one by one. Then I cover them with my white embossing powder and tap off the excess. I didn't prep the page with an anti-static powder tool, mostly because I just don't have one. But if I had one, I actually wouldn't use it for this page. That's because snow isn't perfect in real life, so I don't want this to be perfect as well. But that's just a matter of opinion, of course. If you like it better when it's more perfect, then sure, use your antistatic powder tool if you have one. It's your art journal, so do what you like best. When the snowflakes overlap the sentiment, I just use a dry brush to wipe off the powder where the letters are. 
I love the imperfect look of it, and it also makes sure that the sentiment is still readable. Now the background is completely finished, but I thought that the letters weren't vibrant enough, so I traced them with a black pen. I used my Pigma Microns for this, but you can use any black pen that you like. I'm not sure about what sizes I used. I believe I used the graphic for the bigger letters, and the 03 for the smaller ones, but I'm not quite sure about that. Just use whatever you like. Now the letters contrast more against the background, it's time to glue down the image. And then the page is almost finished. I only added some highlights here and there with my white gel pen. And off camera, I put some Nouveau Crystal Glaze on the eyes. And now the page is finished. I hope you enjoyed watching. And here come some close-up pictures of the project. Thank you so much for watching, if you want to see more, please subscribe and also check out my Instagram. Bye!